Hosa Mamana Wiak. Hello and welcome to a presentation on the Menominee Theoretical Model of Sustainability, as presented by Jasmine Niash, a student at the College of Menominee Nation. The information that you will find in this presentation is based on research, utilizing historical record, existing publications, and interviews with some of those who have contributed to its development. The story of the Menominee Theoretical Model begins here, in the land of the Menominee. Not so long ago, we inhabited a sprawling 10 million acre homeland with lands that encompass northeastern Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. The Menominee people are unique in that we have no migration story. This land is where we were born, this land is where we belong, and this land is who we are. Throughout the 1800s, a series of treaties eroded our territory down from its original size. The current home of the Menominee people is here. Uh, it encompasses a landmass of approximately 235,000 acres, more than 219,000 of which is densely forested. The forest density is so stark that you can actually identify the boundaries of the reservation from aerial photographs. This image, as seen from high up above the Earth's surface, is a testament to the Menominee commitment to stewardship, land ethic, and resilience. The result is a vibrant, lush forest teeming with life, a land so green in contrast to the world around it that it has come to be known as Forest Island. But this place is more than just beautiful. It's also a place of incredible biodiversity. The wildlife is healthy and abundant, and provides not only important sustenance in a place that was once considered a food desert, but also meaning and context for our cultural life. The wildlife, plants, waters, and forest are all key parts of our identity as they have been since time immemorial. Many when they first come here mistake this place for wilderness, but like many indigenous communities, the Menominee people have actually engaged in forest management activities for most of, if not the entirety of their existence. Whether it was ancient Menominee's clearing land for camp and for gardens, or modern Menominee's logging for economic benefit. Menominee forestry techniques are a combination of modern science and indigenous wisdom, such as the guiding principle given to us by Chief Oshkosh. Start with the rising sun and work toward the setting sun, but take only the mature trees, the sick trees, and the trees that have fallen. When you reach the end of the reservation, turn and cut from the setting sun to the rising sun, and the trees will last forever. While forever is still a long ways away, this principle has yielded some 200 years of sustained forestry and counting. Between 1871 and 1890, the Menominee Sawmill produced approximately 100 million board feet just from trees that met Chief Oshkosh's guidelines. Menominee forestry sustained the Menominee people for many years. In 1954, our cash assets totaled $10 million, which when adjusted for 2020 inflation rates, would have accounted for over $95 million. This economic stability caught the attention of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, who were in the process of identifying tribes to be marked for termination. For those of you who don't know, termination was the process of ending the status of federally recognized tribes in the United States so that we could be incorporated into American society. This was done under the guise of increasing our economic freedom, but was also an open attempt at assimilation. Termination was devastating. Menominee County, as it was now known, became the poorest county in Wisconsin overnight. By 1964, our funds dwindled down to $300,000, which wasn't sufficient to provide for the community that was left. Our hospital closed down, along with schools and many other public necessities, in addition to shattering a lot of land-based relationships as Menominees went to the cities in search of work. But the Romney people are not known for going down without a fight. Through the hard work of some of our grassroots community organizers, the Menominee once again regained federal recognition in 1973. After our tribe was restored, we had to face the hard challenge of also restoring the community. The Indian Gaming Act of 1988 helped us out a lot in this regard. We were able to open the Menominee Casino, now known as the Menominee Casino and Resort. This brought much needed jobs and economic opportunity for tribal members who had remained on the reservation. The college and its sister institute, the Sustainable Development Institute, were also chartered in the early 1990s, providing important educational opportunities. As a result, Menominees once again began returning home. But with these new opportunities came new concerns about the growing population. 
While the conversation around the world turned to the carrying capacity of our Earth, many also wondered here at home how many people the reservation could reasonably support. At the same time, Menominee Tribal Enterprises was also getting recognition for its management practices in the forest. In 1995, MTE was the recipient of recognition from the United Nations, as well as the 1996 President's Award for Sustainable Development. The offices of MTE were flooded with requests for tours, interviews, and explanations. Some even joked that it got to the point where foresters were spending more time talking about the forest than they were going out to work in it. College of Menominee Nation leadership and the newly established Sustainable Development Institute saw this as an opportunity. They worked with partners from Menominee Tribal Enterprises, as well as the Tribal Legislature, on ways to communicate the story of the Menominee sustainability to the rest of the world, and also to give some consideration to real-world issues faced by Menominees then and in the future. The result was the Menominee Theoretical Model of Sustainability. The model is comprised of six iterative and dynamic dimensions. These are land and sovereignty, natural environment, including humans, institutions, technology, economics, and human activities, perceptions, and behaviors. These are grounded together by the concept of autochthony, which is intended to sit at the center. Autochthony is the state of being of a place, much as the Menominee people are of the Menominee land. This community-focused model of operating is based on consensus building. It is also a holistic approach to sustainability beyond the triple bottom line that better encompasses that which defines a community. While it is a theoretical model, it's also rooted in real-world problems and real-world questions about how decisions are made and what a sustainable community truly looks like. It is also a way that we, as practitioners and researchers, can really become that bridge between the past and the future by learning from and thinking deeply about what the past has taught us and using that to better inform our decisions about what happens in the future. The first dimension, land and sovereignty, relates back to the collective ownership of the Menominee Reservation and Forest, as well as our fight for sovereignty and self-determination. Sovereignty encompasses the right of a community to govern itself. This dimension considers how a community exercises its power, especially as it relates to other governments and other entities. It asks, where is the locus of decision-making power? Does the community have the right to make decisions for itself? The second dimension is natural environment, including humans. This dimension relates to our commitment and inherent responsibility to the land and waters, to be good relatives because we are sharing that place and also borrowing it from the future generations. Humans are seen as part of the natural world in this model. So the health and well-being of the land is intrinsically tied to the well-being of the creatures who call that place home. This dimension asks the question, what is the relationship with the natural environment and with place? Is it simply a matter of natural resources or is there more to it than that? The third dimension of this model concerns a community's institutions. For the Menominee people, the college, Menominee Tribal Enterprises, Menominee Tribal Legislature, and others play important roles in the community and are part of the way that the community expresses its self-determination. This dimension asks, what are the processes and entities that hold power in a community? How are the decisions implemented? The next dimension is technology. This relates back to the importance of our sawmill, but also to the college's training programs, solar programs, etc., and how they allow us the practical means to self-sufficiently carry out our plants. This dimension asks, what technology exists to help implement those plans? Does that technology facilitate or impede? Does it strengthen the relationship with place or does it create distance? The next dimension is economics. As we can see from the story of the Menominee, financial stability or the loss of it can greatly influence our decisions. And oftentimes we are forced to balance ambition with material reality. This dimension asks, does the community have the self-sufficiency and economic health necessary to execute plans and self-determine? The next dimension is human activities, perceptions, and behaviors. This dimension relates back to our central motivator, which is the value of the Menominee Forest, the value of our inherent right to continue being Menominee, the value of our relationships and responsibilities and identity, and the love we have for children that we will never see or hold in our role as ancestors. This dimension asks, what are the values, ethics, and knowledges that determine what sustainability and community look like? 
How do decisions strengthen or deter from those values? And last, we have at the center, autochthony. Autochthony is the state of being of a place, tied specifically to place-based cultures and taking definition and meaning from that place. More broadly, it's the concept of living with the land, seeing the community as being a part of you and vice versa. Within this model, the relationships between these dimensions are dynamic and in perpetual evolution, both internally and with respect to one another. Special focus is given to areas of tension, especially tension that exists between more than two dimensions. It's important to note that tension can be a source of stress, but it can also be an important part of the creative process and an opportunity to improve upon ideas and decisions, ensuring that the process never stagnates. While theoretical, this model has many practical applications. One example of that is the SEI planning matrix. This matrix examines projects and programs within institutional goals, as well as the six dimensions of sustainability. Other practical applications of the model include committee formation and selection, and using the model to better understand topics within research. You can use this model to delve into a subject from multiple perspectives and with multiple stakeholder interests. We would encourage you to use the model to think about your own work and your own community. For example, what is the relationship with the land in your work? Who are the institutions in your community and what do they do? What are the economic influences there? Additional information about the Menominee Theoretical Model of Sustainability can be found in these resources and others available on the Sustainable Development Institute website. Matt Wannan for listening.